In today's Adobe XD tutorial, we're gonna be using the golden cannon grid to create this website that you see right here for a modern dream home website. So you can find your dream home. So this is all created using the golden cannon grid, which looks a little something like this in our design. And we're gonna use that to position our elements and create this really cool looking website. So that's today's tutorial. Before we get started, I just wanna let you guys know that the completed project file for this tutorial and all my future ones will be available to the members. That's the join button on the channel. That's now a new perk for you guys. So if you are a member, you can head over to the community tab right now and download the project file. So that's where all of my completed project files are gonna be. They're gonna have the wireframes, the finished design, everything that you guys have been requesting from me, that's where they're gonna be. So thanks to all of you who are already members. It helps support me in this channel and I greatly appreciate it, so thank you very much. I just wanna let you guys know that quick update. And so with that said, let's go ahead and dive right into the video. So first off, here is the folder for the Golden Canon template. It's got all the different folders for each software and each file type. I like to use the Photoshop one and just open that up. Because as I mentioned in yesterday's video, sometimes when I convert something from Sketch to Adobe XD, some things get a little wonky, and I think that's what they've done here. And so some of the grid lines weren't showing up for me. So I've just turned off these two artboards and then turned on the grid and then turned everything else off and then exported this as an image. And that's what I'm using in today's video. So you guys can get the exact same grid that I'm using. There's a link in the description to the dribble post with this design template freebie. That way you guys can get your hands on the golden cannon grid. So here on my artboard, which is 1920 by 1080, I've got my grid in here. So to go ahead and get started using this grid, let's go ahead and first create our navigation. So just so this doesn't bother us, I'm going to lock this layer. You can also do that with command L for the shortcut. And I'm gonna go in here into the top and I'm just gonna grab the type tool and create the logo. I'm gonna set it to uppercase. And then today I'm gonna to be using a font called Mintone, I think is how you pronounce this. And we're gonna be using that throughout the design. And then I'm gonna set this to a bold. For now, I'm gonna place this right on top of this first line here of the grid. And we're gonna be using this left-hand side to align that font just like so. If we zoom out and take a look at the grid, we've got these two lines here, and that's where we're gonna place our navigation. So I've just created a text here that's 15 points regular weight, and I'm just gonna align that to the base of that line, and then right here on that slant, I'm gonna position that, then I'm gonna hold Alt and copy this and change our text, and that's gonna be for our two pages of this website. Here in the corner, we're gonna have two icons. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Nucleo, and I'm gonna be using box icons. I'm gonna grab a magnifying glass, and I'll grab this conversation icon for kind of a contact us button. And then I'm gonna place these right here in this corner. Same thing with the font, just lining that up on that baseline. And then we'll grab the magnifying glass, and we'll stick it here positioning it on that second line. So we've used the grid so far to create our navigation and it looks pretty good. Everything looks like it has a place to belong. So let's move on to our content. So one thing I wanna do with this grid just by looking at it is I wanna have a divider on the right hand side here. So I'm gonna create this rectangle and hold command shift left square bracket key to send that all the way to the back. And I'm just gonna fill that add a slight gray and then remove the border for now so that we have that in the background. With that, we're gonna have some kind of slider here that's gonna show some homes since this is for a modern house website. Uh, so we're gonna have that kind of here in this area. And then I want a box that's kind of overhanging maybe two thirds of this for a price and maybe a call to action. So I'm just gonna drag out a rectangle and I think I'm gonna go where all these points kind of meet right here, and I'm gonna have that where my rectangle stops. So let's make sure that's in a good position. And I'm gonna make this a little bit of a darker gray, just because it's gonna stand out quite a bit from the rest of the website. So let's add our image placeholder for our slider. I'm thinking we overhang this middle divider. So we'll start in this corner and we'll just drag 
out a rectangle. We're just going to fit it in this nice box that this grid makes for us. Then I think I'm going to make this a little bit smaller, maybe to the grid line below it. I think it's too big of a section. And then just to add a little bit more depth, let's drag this down in the bottom left corner holding shift so that it stays positioned in this corner right here. Uh, but I want a little bit of an overhang and then we'll send it backward. Command left square bracket key. We'll send it back one layer. And so now it's behind this layer just to add a little bit of dimension. And then we'll remove the border. The next thing I want to do is change the slide. So using this rectangle shape, we're going to create that. And then I'm just going to drag it down so that it matches this edge here. And again, we'll turn that to a different shade of gray. And let's go ahead and get that icon so we don't forget what's going on here. We've got a lot of stuff on the screen. So we'll just grab an arrow. We'll grab this one. And then we'll flip it. And then I'm just going to grab both of them holding shift and then center align that. And then one thing I want to do is I want to double click and then double click again. So now we can edit the individual points. And I'm going to grab this one, hold shift and grab this one and just drag straight over just to add a little bit of length to that arrow. And then after I do that, I'm going to center align it back inside of this rectangle. We also need a way to tell what page we're on. So we're going to do slash 03 for the third slide. I'm going to set it to 36 point just to make it pretty big. Center align it and we'll leave it at regular weight. Since we have this kind of rectangle right here in the top, that's the same shape as this one. I'm going to hold alt and create a duplicate of that one. And we're going to use that as a placeholder to center align that text. And then we can delete it. And now it is perfectly centered in that rectangle. Another cool thing I want to do is since this makes a perfect box, I want to just add a highlight at that by just dragging out a line and maybe going down to this other line right here just to give some shape to that. So if I grab the grid, command L to unlock it and just drag the opacity down, you can see kind of that shape forming there. All right, so I'm going to turn my grid back up to full opacity and command L to lock that again. And since we're over here working in this area, I'm also going to go and add some social media links down here in this bottom corner right here. So instead of using icons for these, I think we'll just use some text. So we'll do FB for Facebook. Set that to 17 point font just to scale it down to like a body size font. Line that to the right and then we'll put that right there in that corner. Then I'm going to hold alt and create a duplicate and we'll just add our own spacing here. We'll say 36 and we'll do that one more time. Just making sure it's even. And then we'll change one to Instagram, one to Twitter, and then we'll check that space one more time and just make sure it's 36. Nice and consistent. Oh, and we have this icon here on this edge. So let's go drag those down to that edge instead, just to make that line up and create a kind of axis there as well, kind of line visually. So that looks pretty good here on the right side. Let's go add the main body of text and heading here for the website. I'm just going to grab the type tool. And I think on this second line right here, I'm going to drag out a text area. We'll adjust the size on this in just a minute. Line it to the left, and I'm just going to fill that with some lorem ipsum. And with the body, we need to add some line height here so it's easily readable. So we're using 17. So we'll go in here to the line height in 17, and then we'll do times 1.5 for 150% line height. And then we'll add that for the paragraph spacing as well, 25.5. So I have two paragraphs of text spaced out just like that. And I'm going to align this, I think, with maybe nothing for now. Maybe just leave this. We'll do the heading next. 
I actually do have a heading I want to put in here. So find modern dream homes and we'll make that two lines. And we're gonna make this pretty big. Let's make it like 80. And then we need to do the line height. So we'll go 80 times 1.2. That looks pretty good. That's 120% line height. And then I want to also change this to bold. And then let's align this to the second line here. We'll continue what we did kind of over here where you have this line as our main bounding box and the contents inside of that is aligned on this line. So we'll do that kind of creating a box here. So we'll align it on that line and I'm actually gonna do that right on the text itself, not its bounding box. And with this, I think I'm going to do this visually. I'm not gonna follow really any other lines to the grid. Maybe we'll have this line run right through the middle of the second text. And that kind of almost has that text sitting on that line, so that's pretty good. Then with the paragraph, we'll just put maybe even 50 looks pretty good. And then we'll add some width to kind of match our text width there. And then double click on that bottom point to adjust that bounding box as well again. To add a bit more detail right here, I think we can highlight some keywords and just change their color for now. I'll just put them into a gray. So we'll do modern and dream, just so they stand out. And let's go ahead and add our image in here just so we can kind of see what's going on. So I'll just drag that in. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. All right, so down here in this box, I'm just gonna lower the opacity on it so we can see the grid through it without having to change the order of our layers. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here and hold alt and grab this number three. And we're gonna use that size text, 36 points and make it bold, align it to the left. We'll just paste in a bit of text there and we'll leave the line height at 43. And for this, I'm going to align it onto this same line that everything else is lined on there. And then I'm gonna select it, hold shift and select the rectangle then go up to this one right here. And that's going to vertically center it into that box. And then to separate this from a price that we're gonna have here. We can take a line straight off of this. So where that overlaps, so I'm just gonna hold shift as I drag out a line and I'll just drag that down to the bottom of the artboard. I think that'll look pretty cool when we go back to full opacity. Yeah, I like that. And then this might be a little too long here. So I might actually scale this into maybe this line just because I don't think we need that big of a box there. So right here, we're gonna have the price of the featured home. So the first thing we need is the price. So I'm just gonna hold Alt on this text and then we'll just input a random number. We'll just do 3.6 million because that looks like a pretty fancy house. And then I'm going to just kind of position this right here for now. Hold Alt to just create another text there and we'll just say featured home. And for that one, we're gonna bump that down to 20 point and regular weight. Make sure these are both center aligned and we'll just stack them straight on top of each other. And then I'm going to group them together with command G, select it, hold shift and grab the background rectangle. And again, we're gonna use this icon right here to vertically align that centered. And then for the horizontal alignment, we're gonna select it and I'm gonna hold alt. And you can see when I hover over this line, we have 133 points space in between this and that line. And then over here we have 123. So I'm just gonna play around with that until they are equal or very close. So I've got it at 128.5 and 128. So that is very close. So I'm gonna leave that. We're gonna call that centered. Then I think that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and grab our grid. We can unlock it and then turn the opacity to 0%. And then command shift left square bracket key. We're just gonna send that all the way to the back. So I think that's a pretty good looking wireframe. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on this artboard and just call that wire and then hit Command D or Command C, Command V just to copy and paste it or create a duplicate. And then we'll call this one design. And we'll go ahead and add some colors and finish this off. All right, so real quick, I just created a simple color palette for this design. Uh, so just to speed up the video, here's the color codes on these. If you want to follow along, this one's 232. 531, that's the darkest kind of blackish blue we're using. Then we got our normal blue, dark blue color. It's 36394E. And then we have the lightest shade of that, which is 5D617C. 
And then our highlight color, our primary is going to be this yellow FFB D7B. And then we just have straight white. And there's the color code for that one. All right, so we're going to go ahead and add these to the design, add a little bit of style elements to it, and then I think we'll have a pretty good website. So I'm going to grab this background rectangle, and I'm just going to hit I for the eyedropper, and just grab that first color. And I'm going to grab those icons before I forget they're up there, set those to white. And then for this next button, we're going to set that to the lightest shade, which is that one right there. And then we'll also set that icon to white along with this text. And then for this line, I think we go with this lighter shade possibly. And let's give it a little width. Let's go maybe four just to beef it up a little bit. And then down here, let's grab those social media links. We'll set those to the lightest shade. I think that looks pretty good. On the left side over here, I'm just gonna grab the entire artboard and we're gonna set that to this mid-tone for our blue, and then our navigation and logo to white as well. For the heading and the body text, both of those are gonna go to white. And then on the body, we'll drop that opacity just to get a little bit of separation between that and the heading like always, down to 80% opacity. And then for our text, we're gonna grab that modern dream and fill that to a yellow, just so we have that nice highlight there. The section I'm gonna make yellow so it stands out nice and big. And then all the text is gonna get filled at that midtone, except the price, which is gonna stand out being set to white. For this little separator line we have here, let's try white on that. And I can't tell if we need to beef this up like this one or not. Let's go ahead and try that. I think it draws too much attention, so I'm gonna Command Z to undo that. We'll leave that at one point width. And I also think this line, now that I'm looking at it, is standing out a little bit too much. So I'm gonna fill that one to the mid color instead of this lighter one, just so it doesn't stand out too bad there. And so that's looking pretty solid, but I think it needs just a little bit more. It's looking a little flat. So I'm gonna go over here in the pasteboard and I'm gonna create a artboard. And we'll just set it to a random size. Right, and what I wanna do is just create a line, just like that. And I wanna put this in the corner and I wanna repeat grid on this. And I'm only gonna drag the handle to the right for now. And I'm gonna hover in between both of them and just drag this all the way into the negative until there's just a tiny amount of space in between them like that. And then I'm just gonna keep dragging to the right. So we get something that kind of covers that artboard. And then let's create a rectangle. That's the size of the artboard. Select it, hold shift and grab that repeat grid, command shift M, or you can always go up to object mask with shape. And now we can delete that artboard and I'm gonna set that to our yellow color. So right click, apply as border. And we're just gonna drag this into the design and we're not gonna use the grid to place this. We'll just kind of place this wherever. And I'm gonna send it all the way to the back with command shift, left square bracket key. And then I'm gonna bring it a few forward until it's in front of both the background and this side rectangle here. And we'll just position that and lower the opacity down a little bit, maybe 50%. That adds a little bit to the design. Hold alt and create a duplicate. And then this time we'll change the line color to this color, this mid one. And then we'll just kinda put that like that. Just adds a little subtle detail, just a little nice touch. And then one last thing I wanna do is I wanna add an underline underneath our logo. So I'm gonna hold shift and drag that out the full width of the logo. Set it to a border of like something like three. Fill it to yellow. And then we'll just bump it down a little bit. I've got mine at 5.5, so basically five or six below that. Just to give the logo a little detail there, and I think that looks pretty good. So that's how to use the Golden Cannon Grid to create a website. That's the process I take, just kind of using that grid to align elements and getting a little creative freedom in there. Some of these elements don't exactly line up, but you can see we've got a lot of them that really do. Like this box, for example, it's adding a lot of shape here. This looks like a rectangle in itself. A lot of squares, 
and just a lot of elements that just look really nicely when aligned to this grid. So let me know what you guys think about the Golden Cannon grid once again down in the comments below. And I hope you guys enjoyed this design tutorial. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. As always, have a great day. And I'll see you guys 